baiting and attacking journalists behind the release of Twitter files, right? So these reporters, these were supposed to be leftist uh, liberals they brought in that Elon Musk brought in, so they wouldn't wouldn't face any complaining against them or anything because they wouldn't have an agenda like they do usually on the far left. And this is what Jim Jordan had to say about that. Journalists aren't Republicans. In fact, I asked the question, these are Democrats. I mean, but they're award- They're Democrat. They're Democrats. They're award-winning. He's going to remind us. Winning journalists, and the left doesn't like the fact that they're reporting the truth. I remember a time when the left embraced the First Amendment and would defend the First Amendment. Now they attack anyone who's conveying the truth to the American people, even to award-winning New York Times best-selling journalists. I've never seen anything like this. And then you couple it with this industrial censorship, industrial complex that they talked about. It is. It should frighten every single American. Every are- single American should frighten them. And so we have Mr. Taibbi, remember, of the Twitter files. He was attacked. Gateway Pundit put out the story. They can't stand when the truth comes out at all. doesn't matter who it comes from. They go ballistic when they're being exposed, and we're just hoping, even though they're exposed, even though they're getting angry, the hope is that we won't hear from them much anymore if they're all taken away to Gitmo. Chairman Jordan, Ranking Member Plaskett, members of the Select Committee, thank you for having me today. My name is Matt Taibbi. I've been a reporter for 30 years uh, and a staunch advocate of the First Amendment. Much of that time was spent at Rolling Stone magazine. Uh, Ranking member Plaskett, um, I'm not a so-called journalist. Uh, I've won the National Magazine Award, the I.F. Stone Award for Independent Journalism, and I've written 10 books, including four New York York Times bestsellers. (laughs) Uh, I'm now the editor of the online magazine Racket on the independent platform Substack. I'm here today because of a series of events that began late last year when I received a note from a source online. It read, are you interested in doing a deep dive into what censorship and manipulation was going on at Twitter? A week later, the first of what became known as the Twitter files reports came out. To say these attracted intense public interest would be an understatement. My computer looked like a Vegas slot machine uh, as just the first tweet about the blockage of the Hunter Biden laptop story registered 143 million impressions and 30 million engagements. But it wasn't until a week after the first report after Michael Schellenberger, Barry Weiss, and other researchers joined the search of the files, that we started to grasp the significance of this story. The original promise of the Internet was that it might democratize the exchange of information globally. A free Internet would overwhelm all attempts to control information flow, its very existence a threat to anti-democratic forms of government everywhere. What we found in the files was a sweeping effort to reverse that promise and use machine learning and other tools to turn the Internet into an instrument of censorship and social control. Unfortunately, our own government appears to be playing a lead role. We saw the first hints in communications between Twitter executives before the 2020 election, when we read things like, flagged by DHS, or please see attached report from FBI for potential misinformation. This would be attached to an Excel spreadsheet with a long list of names whose accounts were often suspended shortly after. Again, Ranking Member Plaskett, I would note that the evidence of Twitter government relationship includes lists of tens of thousands of names on both the left and right. The people affected include Trump supporters, but also left-leaning sites like Consortium and Truthout, the leftist South American channel Telesaur, the Yellow Vest movement. That, in fact, is a key point of the Twitter files, that it's neither a left nor right issue. Following the trail of communications between Twitter and the federal government across, tens of thousands of emails led to a series of revelations. Mr. Chairman, we summarized and submitted them to the committee in the form of a new Twitter file thread, which was also released to the public this morning. We learned Twitter, Facebook, Google, and other companies developed a formal system for taking in moderation requests from every corner of government, from the FBI, the DHS, the HHS, DOD, the Global Engagement Center at State, even the CIA. For every government agency scanning Twitter, there were perhaps 20 quasi-private entities doing the same thing, including Stanford's Election Integrity Partnership, NewsGuard, the Global Disinformation Index, and many others, many taxpayer-funded. A focus of this fast-growing network, as Mike noted, is making lists of people whose opinions, beliefs, associations, or sympathies are deemed misinformation, disinformation, or malinformation. That last term is just a euphemism for true but inconvenient. Undeniably, the making of such lists is a form of digital McCarthyism. Ordinary Americans are not just being reported to Twitter for deamplification or deplatforming, but the firms like PayPal, digital advertisers like Xander, and crowdfunding sites like GoFundMe. These companies can and do refuse service to law-abiding people and, and businesses whose only crime is falling afoul of a distant, faceless, unaccountable, algorithmic judge. As someone who grew up a traditional ACLU liberal, this mechanism for punishment and deprivation without due process is horrifying. 
<laughs> Another troubling aspect is the role of the press, which should be the people's last line of defense in such cases. But instead of investigating these groups, journalists partnered with them. If Twitter declined to remove an account right away, government agencies and NGOs would call reporters for the New York Times, Washington Post, and other outlets, who in turn would call Twitter, demanding to know why action had not yet been taken. Effectively, news media became an arm of a state-sponsored thought policing system. I'm running out of time, so I'll just sum up and say, um, it's just not possible to instantly arrive at truth. It is, it is however, possible becoming uh, technologically uh, possible to instantly define and enforce a political consensus online, which I believe is what we're looking at. This is a grave threat to people of all pers political persuasions. Uh, the First Amendment and an American population accustomed to the right to speak is the best defense left against the censorship industrial complex. If the latter can knock over our first and most important constitutional guarantee, these groups will have no serious opponent left anywhere. If there's anything the Twitter files show, it's that we're in danger of losing this most precious right without which all democratic rights are impossible. Thank you for the opportunity to appear, and I'd be happy to answer any questions from the committee. No wonder they want to take him out. 